So this video is going to be the definition of short and sweet, so let's get straight to it. Ever since episode 4 of Reacher Season 2 has aired, for me it has been a slow decline in the quality we were first delivered in episodes 1 to 3. Episode 6 solidified this feeling as it was a complete departure from the story I knew, and yes, before anyone says, I do expect a series that is meant to be based on a piece of source material to resemble that source by, say at least a ratio of 60 to 40 in favour of the source. So as you can imagine, I didn't have much expectation going into episode 7. However, I am thankful to say that most, not all, but most of my misgivings can be put aside. Episode 7 reinvigorates the characters by showcasing decent action sequences that take place both through the present story and their past exploits. The biggest obstacle to overcome that this series had was how do you showcase Reach's massive overwhelming strength? The usual means for a modern TV series to do this would be to either make each fight seem ridiculous, like Reach is some sort of video game character with unlimited life, or by essentially emasculating the character. To this end, episodes 4 to 6 didn't do a very good job in solving this problem, but thankfully this episode does have one scene where it does, at least in my opinion. The scene in question is a flashback sequence where Reacher and his team take down their biggest case of drug distribution. We see Reacher utilise his environment in order to help take down enemies that are surrounding him and his team, each member equally demonstrating their abilities without defaulting to Gary or Mary Sue tropes. This is culminated when Reacher takes down the lead corrupt officer by using his vehicle. I am also very happy to see many elements of the book, specifically with the events surrounding Dixon and O'Donnell towards the end of the episode. This is where they have been taken captive by Langston to draw Reacher out in order to capture him so Langston can conclude his business with Mahmood. However, there are negatives with this episode. And to be honest, what they are shouldn't be too unexpected. Because those are the pacing. It has all to do with the pacing. What is becoming clear to me is that this should not be an eight episode series, but rather a six episode series. What we have this week are scenes that, while are nice to look at, are ultimately unnecessary. For example, when the drug bust is done in the flashback sequence, the scene continues by showing the 110 packing their gear together having a bit of a song and dance while in between getting chewed out by their immediate superior. This felt, at least to me, stretched, and could have been cut back to simply having the team getting a talk into by their higher up, then maybe after he leaves, we have roughly 10 to 15 seconds where we crack a few smiles and laughs of relief, but then it should have moved back quite quickly on with the main story. Instead, it really just lingers there for a bit, good two or three minutes. Now, that might not seem long to you, but it, watching it, it's a long time. Of course, there will be people who will have no issue with this. I understand that, especially if you enjoy sentimentality. But for me, if sentiment takes the place of plot in a TV show, I just simply have no time for it. One other point of contention is the ramifications of Russo's death. Now, I will admit I am hoping this is all a smokescreen for the finale, that he turns up as a partner of Langston. But as of right now it is creating more problems than anything else. So due to his death, Reacher goes to see his corrupt NYPD captain, where he interrogates him and eventually kills him. Now, if Russo doesn't reveal himself again in the finale, I honestly do not know what the point of these two characters ultimately were outside of filler for the series. As I said, it should be six episodes, not eight. Most of the events that these two are here for could have been done off screen or even not at all. If Russo isn't an antagonist in the finale, his entire character, in my view, is pointless. And I will stand by that view when reviewing next week's episode. I do hope to see him again and be able to change this opinion. Now, speaking of the finale, the series seems to have done a bit of a semicircle and come back to the book in terms of where Reacher ends up. The difference being, in the novel, it is only him and Neely that attempt to rescue Dixon and O'Donnell, whereas here, Reacher is utilising the resources of Senator Lavoie to get extra men on the ground. I'm about to tear the apple cart to pieces. You still prepared to give me everything I need? 100%. Your private security, former SEALs and Rangers? Two SEALs, one Ranger. Good, I need them. Now, I think this is great. I genuinely do. I think this is great. As you can see why the Senator's character has been included in the series. He has a clear-cut purpose. However, it does also serve as a reminder why the Russo character, right now at least, is less impactful. 
Again, this all circles back to me hoping and praying that he is in the finale as one of the primary antagonists. But that aside, overall, I think this episode performed better. I really do. It utilised parts of the novel while still maintaining its own original plot, which is all I ask for at the end of the day. When it comes to doing a full series review, I think right now, unless something changes, my biggest gripes will be the pacing and perhaps the need to change locations. Changing locations hasn't worked out well for them, as I have illustrated in my previous reviews. No need to go into those details here, because I've gone over them to death, and I'll save that for the full series review. Anyway, I am looking forward to the finale, despite any negatives I may have, so until then, please pop your thoughts into the comments below, like and subscribe if you feel like I've earned it, and until next time everyone, take care.